favorite suwar. It's revelation coming early in the Medinan period, many of it coming right after the Battle of Badr and the lessons learned, and some of it after the Battle of Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts a series of ayat, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold tight to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, jami'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the jami', the plural in the Qur'an, but emphasizes that plural by saying jami'an, all of you together. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not be divided. Right? And remember by His grace how He united your hearts and you became brothers. And you were at the brink of a fiery pit and He saved you from it. So this series of ayat continues, right? It starts with the concept of brotherhood of our ummah coming together to make a difference. Because we cannot make a difference unless we are united under the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes straight to the next ayah. That this ummah, this group of people that have come together for the sake of Allah, what is their purpose? Their purpose, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةِ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And let there be among you those who call others to goodness. Encourage what is good and forbid what is evil. It is they who will be successful. And Allah continues this series of ayat talking about what we shouldn't do. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا And don't be like those who split into sects and differed after clear proofs. And brothers and sisters, we saw what happens to a nation when it splits into sects. And the troubles that are caused by those who would come to overturn a system that is agreed upon. This is the form of chaos and fitna, which the Prophet ﷺ continuously warned us. But the reason I mention these ayat today is we as Muslims living in this society, have a sacred duty that has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, wa'tasimu bihablillah. So the returning, uh, centering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, centering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fundamental and foundational to our identity, to our belief as Muslims. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa'tasimu and starts with wa'tasimu bihablillah. Hold firm together to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this holding firm has a purpose. As believers, as a community, we have a purpose. Our purpose is, وَلْتَكُنْ minkum umma. Let there be among you a group of people who call to goodness. And that is our role as Muslims. It is not enough that a Muslim says, okay, I have American citizenship, I'm an American, I was born here, I got citizen and now I'm good. No, it is a duty upon a Muslim to say, no, if I see a wrong, I will make that wrong difference. I remember exactly four years ago, I happened to be giving the same khutbah, except it was a much different time. The khutbah at that time, the Muslim community was concerned. They were thinking, what will this administration do? And it has done a lot of damage. And though there has been a change in administration, that doesn't mean there's a change in us and our role as believers. Doesn't mean that now that there is a new administration that we can relax and say, okay, we're, we're done, we're good. It's a duty of us as Muslims to say, no, there is injustice in society. It is a duty to say, if someone is poor and someone is ultra rich, that this is not justice. That someone is struggling to make their ends meet, struggling because of things that are not in their control and someone, while the others are struggling, is making billions and hundreds of billions of dollars. No, this is not justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us 
that our role after holding firm to the, tight, the, right, the rope of Allah is the role of calling for goodness. That when I see an injustice, when I see a wrong, I call it out and I say, this is wrong. That when I see something that is good, I say, this is good and we should do it. And that is our continued role as believers in this society. Brothers and sisters, yes, there is a new administration. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide this administration towards justice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a community that continue to calls for justice. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a community that calls to goodness. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues these ayat. يَوْمَ تَبْيَضُّ وُجُوهُ وَتَسْوَدُّ وُجُوهُ On this day that there will be faces that are brightened, that are lit. And on this day there will be faces that are gloomy. And these are the faces that have not stood to stand in front of an oppressive ruler. The Prophet ﷺ reminds us, Unsulakhaka, Valiman, O Madluma, stand to, to defend or make change to your brother if they are an oppressor or they are oppressed. And the companions they said, Okay, Prophet of Allah, we know what it means to help the person who is oppressed. What does it mean to help the person who is an oppressor? He said to stand and prevent him from oppressing someone. And that becomes our role, brothers and sisters, so that on the day of resurrection, in front of the King of Kings, in front of the Master of the Day of Judgment, our faces will be amongst those who are lit to say, Ya Allah, no matter what administration, no matter what governance came to our country, we stood to say, this is right and this is wrong. We stood amongst those who stood firm to say, we have amr bil ma'roof and nahi an munkar. We are preventing what is evil and joining what is good. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continually make us amongst those who stand for goodness and prevent evil. Laqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih Wa sallallahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues this series of ayat Wa amma alladheena biyadat wujuhum That those whose faces are brightened on that day they will be in Allah's mercy. This is how to achieve Allah's mercy. We start with holding to the, the rope of Allah. Then we enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil so that we can have a righteous society. And then we will be counted amongst those who enter the mercy of Allah. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues actually, He ends this series of ayat with an ayah, Kuntum khayra ummah, ukhrijat linnas. You were the best of nations, the best community that came out to people. But there was a specification that allowed us to be, or that will allow us to be khayra ummah, that will allow us to be the best of communities. That specification is that you would enjoin what is good, you would forbid what is evil, and you would believe in Allah. Brothers and sisters, what do we take away from this khutbah today? We have a new administration. This coming year, we have new elections in Virginia. This coming year, I know we, everyone's going to tell me we just got done with elections. No. We have another election this coming year for governor and the, the, the lieutenant governors and attorney general. And these are the people that will impact you directly because this is your state. The question for us brothers and sisters isn't to just say, okay, now another administration is done, Trump is gone, that we should relax. On the contrary, it is incumbent upon us 
to say what is our role as Muslims? What do we want to see as the better society? What do I as a Muslim believe should be the status of our community? What should the state do to help bring about justice and to stop extreme poverty and to stop injustices to people who are colored or people who don't necessarily fit a certain profile? So the practical things that I'm asking my brothers and my sisters to say, okay, take a breath. Trump is gone, that's fine. But after taking that breath, realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow us to say, okay, that no, someone else is there, we can relax. Always calling to goodness. Always calling to goodness. And enjoining what is good and forbidding that which is evil. The practical. Number one, return to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the answers to all of life's circumstances. These ayat I am reading to you came at specific times in the Prophet's message and they answered specific things and they are a cure for our society now. This is truth. You know, people talked about alternative facts and what is truth and what is not. You want truth. It's between our hands in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So return to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want us to return to ayahs 103 to 110 of Surah Ali Imran. 103 to 110 of Surah Ali Imran. That's number one. Number two. This year, and subhanAllah, a Muslim who is running for lieutenant governor, for the deputy of the governor, called me just before we started. I didn't answer his phone because we're going to start the khutbah. It's a Muslim running for this post. You have Muslim brothers and sisters that are running for Alexandria City Council. Now we have one, there's another brother that wants to be. Some Muslim brothers and sisters are running to make change in the state. I want you this week to spend five minutes learning about one of those Muslims. And if you like one of them, I want you to call and say, I'm ready to spend one hour to volunteer. What do you need? Because maybe we don't have all the time to step up and make that difference. But those of our community that have stepped up, those that have stepped up, we should at least support with our time. Right? So I want us to search. If you need help, I'm happy to give you some names. Right? And I want you to look up who's running and spend one hour saying, I will volunteer either making calls or going and knocking on doors or distributing pamphlets, whatever it is. But volunteer one hour. Number three, for those of you that have kids, Please, please, now you can do it. In the past, your kids are in school. Now they're sitting at home online. Spend some time to understand what is being taught to our kids. And volunteer to help teachers, to help with the parent teacher association. Find a way to connect with your children because they are being taught things that you will not approve of maybe. And if you're not aware and you're not in touch, then you don't know what's happening in their lives. And by the time they reach teenagers, you wouldn't know who you're dealing with anymore. So spend a few, if you have kids, spend a few minutes this week asking them what is their lessons, what's going on in their life, and maybe listen in on one of their classes, just so that you can understand what is happening with your children. Right? And then see if you can volunteer for a parent teacher association. Right? Because you're a parent. You want to know what's happening. You want to help the school, help the teachers, and make sure that our kids are being taught right. So, number one, Surah Ali Imran 103 to 110. Please return to that. If you do nothing else this week, return to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, Look up who is running for office as a Muslim in our community and say, I'm going to spend a few minutes 
Maybe it's just you telling that person what's wrong with our community. Maybe you say, okay, people need help with rent. People need help with immigration. People need help with whatever. But spend a few minutes understanding, learning who's running and saying you're gonna help. And number three, watch out what's happening with the kids. Pay attention to your kids' classes and say, I'm gonna get involved in the parent-teacher association. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a, a community that guides to justice. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this community, bless the brothers and sisters in this community and society. I have a couple of people that we want to make dua for. First of, of all, Brother Muhammad Abdul Mun'im and his wife are afflicted with COVID. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa, to grant them a healing and make it an expiation and make it easy upon them. Uh, we also have Sister Nur Hawash is in surgery right now. One of our young people that is a board member here at Dar al-Hijra. Uh, she's having surgery. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal her and to relieve her of any uh, difficulty and make it an expiation of her for her. And also one of our brothers, his grandmother passed away in Tajikistan, Sister Mahbuba Jurayeva. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive her, to elevate her, to make it easy for her family and grant them patience. Ameen. Wa aqim as-salah.